Hi, welcome to another Van Tech Tuesday, and this week it's all about solar panels. So for the last couple of weeks, because last week was the very special talking about toilets video, uh, this week is all about solar panels because for the last two weeks it's been questions mainly about solar panels. So I thought I'd do a one-off special solar panel Q&A. So let's get straight to the first question. Um, should I buy flex or rigid solar panels? The flex panels do fit the contours of my roof better and are lower profile and look less ugly from the side profile of my van. I get that, I really do. Probably slightly easy to install as well, but they are less efficient and their lifespan isn't the same. Whilst on a normal rigid panel, you might get 20 years of a lifespan out of the rigid panel. On a flex panel, it might not be as good um, and they do suffer with heat and they do crack and break down. Um, for example of that, Darren, the urban motorhome, he had all sorts of problems later last year uh, with his flex solar panels and they were replaced with rigid panels. Um, like I said, they're slightly less efficient on the flex panels too. So from my point of view, I would say at all possible, try and avoid the flex panels. Uh, next question is, should I choose mono or poly solar panels? Um, Again, kind of, this is probably based on price. Mono and poly panels are still rigid panels. However, it's the basics of how they're made up that make the difference. So for example, um, the mono panels are more expensive. However, the plus side of that is they're slightly more efficient. Um, well, noticeably more efficient, maybe up to kind of 10% more efficient than a poly panel. Um, and they will last longer. And say, for example, if you've been running your panel for 20 years, the mono panel will still give you around about 80% of its uh, stated rated capacity. Whereas the poly panel probably wouldn't, it'd be close to 50% after that time. So if you're in it for the long haul and you want to make a good investment, it's worth spending the extra money to get a mono panel. Um, the next question is MPPT or PWM controllers? Um, there's not a great deal of difference in price these days. Uh, PWM controllers are the more basic, um, whereas MPPT is a far more advanced controller and battery management system. For example, an MPPT could be likened more to a battery to battery charger in the fact that it has the ability to bulk charge, um, basically kind of like give you a flat charge as you're using it um, and then basically give you a float charge like a trickle charge top-up charge so the absorption state of a, of a you know b2b charger and an mppt controller is when you're using pretty much most of the power you're bringing in um, bulk is when the batteries are mainly getting the full charge um, and then float is when they're basically sat there just topping up the batteries, just keeping them trickle charged. Uh, and that only happens with MPPT controllers. It doesn't happen with a PWM controller. PWM controller literally just passes the power from the panel to the battery. Uh, the next one is what cable size should I lose, use for my solar panel array? Um, I want to add further panels at a later stage. So I want to make sure I install just the one cable. Uh, well, there's two cables because you've got a plus and a minus, so just bear that in mind. Um, and the average cable that they come with is literally kind of like two and a half mil, um, and which should give you about 30 amps. And that's a pretty big array. You're talking, you know, 400, 500 watts or so. However, if you do want to go down the next level um, and put in you know, kind of like, you know, a, a, the bigger kind of cables you can, uh, 10 mil will, should give you around about 100 amp. Uh, eight and a half mil should give you about 60 amp, but there are gauges online that will tell you how much um, power you want to put down a cable and what diameter cable that you can choose for that. Just make sure that if you are using solar panel cables, uh, they're double insulated. That means it's the core, so that's the copper. Uh, Multi-strand copper it should be, it should never be a single core cable. So multi-strand copper cable, uh, then surrounded by the normal PVC insulation and then it's got a further UV and weather protection insulation around that. So that's how you can tell it's a proper um, solar panel cable as opposed to just a normal regular power cable that might be put in the inside of the van. Um, here's one that I get asked pretty much probably on a daily basis. Uh, should I wire my solar panels in series or parallel? Um, so I'm going to basically give you, you know, the 
the crux simple answer of both of them and you can make your own mind up and I'll kind of decide what I think I would do. So a parallel basically sums up the amps but keeps the volts the same. So you would have to have identical panels to wire them all in parallel. Say for example, three panels that give out um, 24 volts. Um, what would happen is, say for example, they were all maybe, you know, 10 amps. You would get a still throws three panels in parallel. You'd still get 24 volts, but you would get 30 amps because all the amps have been added up. So that's, the, so that's kind of like a rough way that works. Uh, whereas series, can be used in multiple different size of panels um, and basically you should always have the smaller panel at the start and the larger panel at the end so it means you can actually choose multiple different types of panels multiple different types of voltages as well and what you're doing is you're adding all the volts together um, and this is where it's kind of crucial to use an MPPT controller because it'll help get those high volts down to 12 volts and then give you a higher amp output as well so that's something to be quite kind of like careful about as well if you are wiring multiple panels in series then it's almost kind of like you know crucial you use an MPPT controller um, and what they do in series is basically like I say they add up all the volts um, and from that then you get a higher voltage so it could be a 12 volt panel 24 volt panel or a 48 volt panel it would, it would basically add up all those volts and this way it's crucial to get the right controller say for example my controller is 100 volts or 30 amps and that's its two maximums um, so basically you can have all your panels up as long as it doesn't get in excess of 100 volts um, or if you were to do it in parallel you can add all your panels up as long as you don't get more than 30 amps so i hope that kind of makes sense on that one um, and which is best in my view um i'd go series um, like I say, I've got an MPPT controller so I can handle series and by doing series you are effectively having the ability if you wanted to to add more panels at another stage so that's why I would do it. Uh, next question is how often do you clean your solar panel and does it really make that much difference? Um, yes it does. I'm going to link to a little video now um, that's a Geeky Phil's video and he did a quick test of like placing certain things, small things or big things like a mobile phone or a tiny little sticker on his solar panel and just to show you how much that drops in power. So say for example if you don't clean your solar panel for a bit and it gets you know a kind of like a, an average level of dirt and dust and grime on it then you are going to get a reduction in power but say for example if you get a massive big bird poo on a certain area of your solar panel if that's in the wrong place that could affect the big cluster of because uh, all the solar panels if you notice they're tiny little arrays so that's how they're all wired together so if you get a bird poo on one of the arrays closest to the cable out then you're going to affect the whole array so it can make a big difference but like i say it's better explained in phil's video so i'll link phil's video down below um, i clean my panels at least once a week if not twice a week especially if we're out somewhere like this where there is salt spray off the uh, sea and sand and we're under trees and all that kind of stuff so the next question we've kind of touched on this already um, how long will my solar solar panel last so yeah as i said if you buy a decent um, mono crystalline panel uh, then basically 20 years um, and you should still get about 80 percent power out of that panel so yeah i mean if you keep your van that long um, not that many people do but and you'll get some some proper use out of it and then after 20 years you might have to replace it if you are talking about getting you know the most efficiency out of your panel I'm going to guess in 20 years time solar panels are going to be way more efficient than they are now and way more cost effective to install and set up so yeah I wouldn't worry about the lifespan of solar panels right now. Next question how much extra power can I get from tilting my panel um, and the short answer to that one is you know if you are up in Scotland and it's winter time um, to change the angle of your solar panel to the right angle and there are charts that you can look at online um, but essentially kind of like a you know 45 degrees or there around is a good angle to start at um, but you can get up to 40 percent more power from your solar panel so it's well worth doing if you can um, obviously in summer times the sun's quite overhead quite a lot during the day so it doesn't make that much difference but certainly in winter time certainly in the uk you know you can get an awful lot more power uh, just by tilting your panel uh, the next question is how much power are you getting in spain on a sunny day from your solar panel really good question that one um 
it's amazing actually. I looked at the stats over several days and then looked at the best one. Um, and I've got a 360 watt mono panel, just one panel. Um, and I've got an MPPT controller, it's a Victron 130. Um, and I had uh, just under 1100 watt hours in a day. Uh, which works out to be 90 amp hours of power putting back in my battery. So for example, if you've got a 90 amp hour battery, um, essentially I could charge it from nothing to full in a day on the power that I've collected for free on my solar panel. It's not bad, is it really? Right, uh, the next one is about a fridge and I'm a bit confused on this one, so I'll kind of try and go over it as much as I can. Someone's asked if they can run a three-way three fridge um, off their solar panel. So I'm guessing you mean off 12 volts. Um, and I actually did this because, you know, I'm, I am Gadget John, I like to be thorough about stuff. Um, so I wired my three-way fridge, 12 volt circuit, to my batteries and then monitored the output and input through the solar panel. And whilst my solar panel was matching the 10 amps um, that the fridge was taking, the fridge previously had been running on LPG and was down to three degrees. So it was already chilled. All the 12 volts had to do was keep it chilled. And over an hour of running on 12 volts, the fridge had actually risen to nearly nine degrees C. So that's three times warmer three times less efficient if you want um, on 12 volts than it is on LPG. So I hope that helps. However, if you've got a compressor fridge, 12 volt compressor fridge, yeah, all day you should run that off your solar panel or whatever because that is exactly what they're meant for and they are brilliant fridges. 12 volt compressor fridge should be the go-to fridge for everybody camping. So the next question is, can you actually have solar charge in your battery whilst you're driving down the road on B2B charger also charging your battery, or say for example, solar and hookup on a campsite. Simple answer is yes, as long as it's a decent solar controller, they'll work that out between them and your battery should still get, you know, the rate of charge from both of them. So that's the certain, that's the case in mind anyway. So as I'm driving down the road in summer here, uh, my solar controller is giving as much, maybe kind of like 10, 15 amps, uh, whilst my BTB is giving 20 amps. And if I look at my BMV, uh, which is telling me my battery state, uh, that will show me I'm getting almost kind of like 30 odd amps. So um, yeah, that's the short answer to that one. They'll all work together. Next question. Do I really need a sunny day to get power from my solar panel? No, you don't. Uh, but when the sun is directly shining on your solar panel, that's when it's working at the most efficient it can do. So if it's a a bright day shall we say or it's a hazy day you'll still get charge going through to your solar panel but it might be kind of 10 to 15 percent at the most of what it would be if you were under bright sunlight conditions so the next question is is solar charging good for my batteries i've heard that sporadic charging of batteries will damage them um now I guess what you mean by that is the fact that you know you can be in direct sunlight one minute and getting 10 15 amps and then two minutes later you can be get you know there's a cloud and you're getting maybe kind of like two amps or something like that um oddly enough um lead acid batteries most batteries are actually capable of handling that kind of thing batteries love a lower rate of charge than a high rate of charge so yeah it's it's just being like a trickle charge essentially and batteries love that they were designed for that so it's not a problem at all um, and the last one, I'm going to mention it, it's not been asked of me, I've just seen loads of people doing it. Um, and that is, can you walk over your solar panels? No, they're glass. No. <laughs> don't put any pressure on, don't put your hand on them to lean across, don't walk on them or anything like that. Essentially, they're made up of massive cells. So all those little patterns you can see in the solar panel are all cells. They're linked together by a metal track, like a circuit board. All it takes is for you to lean on it, crack it, damage the circuit board. You could take about, you know, if not a portion of your panel to the entire panel, depends on where you crack it. So no, don't put any pressure on a solar panel, be it flexed, flexi panel or rigid panel. Don't walk on them. Don't put anything else on top temporarily or otherwise that might, you know, damage the panel. Uh, really, really, really look after your solar panels and they'll look after you. So, thanks for watching this uh, little special solar panel video and um, hope I've answered all your questions. If not, do ask them in the comment section down below and I'll try and uh, tag them onto next week's video. You take care and from this lovely sunny beach in Portugal, I hope you're having a great day. I hope the storms have now cleared in the UK and you're having a bit better weather. Bit better weather. There you go. I've, honestly, it's, 
It's half past ten in the morning. I've not even been to the bar yet. I am next to the bar though. I just thought it was a great location. I was going to sit on their chairs, but it was out of the sun, so I didn't bother. Right, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.